the very first match of the night, AEW Tag Team Champions, the acclaimed and FTR, who hold all the other tag belts in the world, they defeated the Guns and Swerve in Our Glory, uh, kicked off the, the show. This is one thing. I think MJF should be on the show every week, physically be there or have a, a part where... You know, you're going to hear from MJF later on. You need to have that, I think, with John Moxley. I'm not sure anymore if you need that with Brian Danielson, but I think you need to have the acclaimed on there every week to at least do that rap. It's not like it's a, you know, incredibly mind-bending number of bars with, with great, you know, intrigue and insight put into those lyrics. It's just basically insulting lyrics, but people love them and they love the acclaim. So you got to figure out a way to get them, in my opinion, on Wednesday nights every week makes it a little bit easier that they're the AEW tag team champions, but they're not a group that should probably get pushed over to Friday nights, but they defeated the guns and swerve in our glory. One of the key parts that took place in that match happened before where Keith Lee decided to blow off Swerve Strickland during a fist bump. Uh, so drama building between Keith Lee and, and, and Swerve, it seems like from the time they put that group together, they were going to be breaking them apart. And uh, once again, a little bit of heat between those two for Swerve pitting Keith Lee in such a bad spot with Billy Gunn, who did go after Swerve before the match. That's how he was kicked out of the building. And that's why his presence was not around ringside during the match. Uh, afterwards, uh, we got the MJF video on Pardon My Take on that radio show, on that podcast, talking about how the doctors uh, told MJF not to attack, uh, not to travel after the attack by the firm. He says history is going to be made at full gear and then compared himself to generational rivals like Bruno San Martino, John Cena, The Rock, and others. MJF said he doesn't like John Moxley, but he respects them uh, because he's had to work his ass off to get where he's at. MJF said he was born to do this, act in movies, and be the flag bearer for AEW and bring pro wrestling back to where it needs to be. He says, William Regal bet on the wrong horse and come full gear. The devil gets his due. This was really an excellent promo. And him talking about how in his mind he has been overshadowed. He had a, the, the match with Moxley. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but Matt Hardy took that nasty fall backwards off that scaffold or whatever it was, the, the scissor lift he was on. That overshadowed him. You know, he comes back. And what happens? The fight at the press conference, that overshadows that. So there's always something in his mind as a heel that's been bringing him down, that's been a reason that he's been overshadowed. Blamed Chris Jericho a couple of times for that. So Chris, uh, so MJF, great promo. I haven't heard the whole show uh, on Pardon My Take, but if you, if, again, great promo to build uh, his match with Moxley in a great promo to want to hear the rest of what he said on Pardon My Take for Real. Interesting. A little bit of counterbalance here with Stokely Hathaway with a pre-taped promo and a little vignette talking a little bit about some more backstory between him and MJF because... I didn't really like how MJF was jumped by the firm and that's how he turned to be a baby face and going through the table and then not be in there last week. I mean, I, I really didn't like that at all, but background is important in trying to build a story around what is going on exactly with Stokely Hathaway and the firm and why he has this animus now with MJF, why he kept sticking his nose in MJF's business. And now we have a little bit more of a hint as to why, because he and Stokely, apparently, according to Stokely, you know, he forgot where he came from. My childhood friend, we grew up together in this. I want to see you shine. And if you shine, I shine. But instead, you're not doing that. You're just riding John Moxley on the front end. I can't say it on the radio. But he's riding without a license, apparently, according to Stokely Hathaway. And he says he doesn't need MJF. He's going to do all this without him. And uh, he's going to see Max in hell. So I don't know what all this is really going to mean. Does it mean they take over the world title? Does it mean a takeover of all of AEW? Don't know. But at least we now have a personal connection, not just business, that has been established between MJF and Stokely Hathaway. So one of his charges, Ethan Page defeated Eddie Kingston, who had Ortiz by his side, to advance in the title eliminator tournament. I hate the fact that they're having this tournament. It is hard for me to believe that this is not just going to end up with Ethan Page and MJF. Why you just couldn't be having matches during this time? 
to lead up to this? I, I don't know, but they like tournaments there. But Eddie Kingston took an ego's edge, a a incredible looking razor's edge off the top rope, off the second rope. Realistically, that's where Ethan Page was standing, but it, it looked. A little shaky there as far as Paige being able to get Eddie up, but then threw him down. Eddie didn't land on his back as much as it looked like he landed on his tailbone making the landing there. But Eddie Kingston loses. Ethan Page moves on. Well, surely this is going to play into more of Eddie Kingston's frustrations about where he's at right now and uh, dealing with the people and the world that he is in. So Paige is going to face the winner of Bandito and Arush in the next round of the tournament. I will not give you any Rampage spoilers, but all of these uh, things have already been all decided. So if you want those, you can listen to last night's Wrestling Observer Radio at the end. Yesterday's or today's WrestlingNews.com, Wrestling News uh, podcast. You can listen to that at the end, and uh, and you can get what happens there. Uh, Renee Paquette interviewed Jose, the assistant, Roosh and Dark Order, about still wanting 10 to be a part of their group. Uh, John Silver called Roosh a, a Roosh bag. High five he, uh, uh, with himself on that when he was all proud of himself. But uh, yeah, so 10 and Roosh continue, even though uh, did anybody really, really ask for this? But uh, <laughs> this is what Roosh got with Andrade. He punched out Sammy. It's like, okay, well, you're going to get this deal with 10 now and just kind of spin wheels here for a little bit. Arya Daivari uh, was in the ring with uh, his trust butler that he has with him. Said he wanted a title match with Wardlow for the TNT belt. And if he lost, Wardlow could have his butler. No surprise, he lost. Perfect use of Arya Tavari in this. I'm not necessarily thrilled with seeing him, but I am th thrilled with seeing Warlow murderize guys, and we need to see more of that. I like, though, at the end, finally, when Warlow uh, said that he would like to take all of these titles because Powerhouse Hobbs uh, was called out. He came out. Wardlow said the TNT title is going to be his. And in fact, he's going to take every other title in the company. And he forgot Samoa Joe was standing behind him with the ROH TV title. And he waylaid Wardlow with that belt. I don't know exactly what they're doing here. And you do have two belts. But until ROH becomes a TV show, like, you can kind of merge two belts for a while and the TNT title and the ROH title to have Wardlow walking around with both of those or to have powerhouse Hobbs walking around with both of those wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. So a three way, but be between those guys killing each other, I will be for Dr. Britt Baker and Soraya face to face. You know, Soraya had her line in there about wrestling at the Tokyo Dome. She has not. Uh, I believe she's wrestled at the uh, Ariaki Coliseum, I, I believe, when WWE went over there. I'd have to double check that, too. But showed some emotion, showed some fire, you know, went back and forth with Britt Baker, who, no surprise, defending AEW. I'm the one who built this thing. You're a superstar just strolling through. Soraya firing back at her. You don't even know what it's like to be a superstar. Your ego is just the biggest thing in the room right now. All this going back and forth. Bottom line is they will actually be wrestling at full gear. So Soraya's first match in a long, long time and Britt Baker together. So, again, they need to get some fire behind that women's division. They have talent there. They have good people there. They just got to get something to click. Will that be the thing or is the only thing that they're going to have for them that makes them click? Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. Jamie Hayter did get in a win over Sky Blue. Jay Lethal defeated Trent Beretta, which ended up leading to an All-Atlantic title challenge uh, that, that comes a little bit later on for Lee Johnson to face uh, Orange Cassidy coming up on Friday. John Moxley had his response to MJF, which I thought was fantastic, firing back right at MJF. Uh, trying to put him in his place, calling him out, saying that he's the devil. No, no, John Moxley has been in some places with some people and has seen the devil face to face. And MJF, you are not the devil. They, he, both he and Regal hopes that he can put the company on his back one day and take him to the promised land. But he's a far way away from it. And then the final match, Brian Danielson defeated Sammy Guevara, two falls to one. 
And Brian Danielson took a shot with a chair in this match that was nasty in the first fall, but he survived through it, picked up the victory. I think I get a victory for making it through this show today. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. There's a lot of criticism about professional wrestling. You all right over there? What's going on with you? There's double the mic. Sorry. No, what do you need so much water for today? It's coffee. Put that away. Crying out loud, it's nighttime. You're not going to be able to sleep. You have to have another drink right now. God help me. Now, where was I? People didn't like this so much, I hear. I can't even remember what I was angry about. I got a question. Is anyone else thirsty? How did I not see that? You absolute... God, I hate everybody on this show. It's not an issue of whether the listeners can hear it. I don't care about you. It's about me. Sociopath. God. Me? Yeah. Now my wife is texting me, Craig. I hope you're happy about that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.